Hello everyone, welcome back to Genshin Impact. Thank you for joining me today. There has been a horrible accident. We need to see, was it a murder? Was it a crime at all? Was it just an accident? We're going to get our detective hat on and we're going to examine and explore the uh, the crime scene. Let's investigate this rope here. This, look at, this is where the thing crashed down and killed one of the poor crew members. Let's see if we can figure this one out. So this is the rope that broke and caused the water tank to fall. Hmm, the rope looks pretty durable. How can it be burned through so quickly by fireworks? So either Lin you didn't realize this was a safety concern, or... Hmm? Why are you suddenly so serious, Traveler? I'm just looking at where the rope snapped. Whoa! Look! This bit is made from different material! It's interesting. Most of it was burned away, but... There's still a little bit of it left. Yeah, it seems to be flammable, like a type of flash cotton. Huh. So if a rope meant to hold something was made with that kind of material in it, then that means... Wait, why would you write all this down? Let's take notes. <laughs> Can't take you seriously, Byron. <laughs> Not with those glasses on. Okay, special rope. This rope was used to suspend the water tank. It suddenly broke when the fireworks were being launched on stage. The investigation has shown that the location where the rope snapped was made of flammable material. Okay. Look for clues. I still, this is one of... Oh, sorry, zero of three. Um, that wasn't a clue? Okay, maybe there's more. Go ahead, have a look around. In the end, we're both after the truth. Okay. Alright, we'll do that. Uh, oh, here we go. The magic... Examine the damaged magic box. The broken magic box was left on the scene after the guards completed their investigation. Looking at it now, the water tank must have struck it really hard. Well, I imagine that water tank was pretty heavy. It looks pretty sturdy. Uh, white line. This is where the magic box was struck. If Cal weren't inside the box at that moment, he might have dodged the falling water tank. Tragic. Is there anything we can look at inside here? Oh, hang on. Was there something? Or was that just... No, it's just the white line again. Investigate. Uh, okay, the rope that smeared the water the tank was definitely tampered with by someone. This was no accident. Okay. Doesn't seem to be anything else here, then. Okay, let's move on. Uh, so, okay, we've got a couple of things telling us to go over here. Let's go and... Uh, See where this is. What, what is it pointing me towards? That's the stage. So I feel like I'm missing something. Hang on. What? What was? Wasn't that just point? Hang on. Nineteen meters. And now it's gone. Why is that disappearing and reappearing? What? What? What am I supposed to be doing here? Okay. Okay. Well, can we? Okay. Examine the magic box. We can do that. Maybe. Looks like an ordinary box, but then he somehow moved instantly from the stage to being inside of it. How did he do it? I don't know. It'd be helpful if we could see inside it. Is there, is there a passageway under the stage? Maybe that's what that's trying to show me. But look, definitely look. 15, 16 meters is showing me something here, but when I get close, it disappears. It must be something underneath. Could we get under the stage then? Let's have a look. Maybe that's what it is. It's because I'm too high up. Out here. No, there's no door there. Uh, well, this is intriguing. Because I'm thinking that must be the way to do it, is to have like a passageway that under the stage where you would go. Is there a doorway to under the stage around? There isn't, is there? Interesting. Where is it trying to tell me to go then? Also got something over here. No, it looks like that's outside. Why is it telling me to go outside? So it's still telling me to go and look at the stage, but I thought I'd Oh I'm confused. What what am I missing? I'm doing something wrong here. Let's go let's go outside then. 
What have we got over here? Hey, you! Yes, both of you! Over here! I've been keeping an eye on you for a while now. Oh, is that Navia? Huh? You mean us? That's right. If I'm not mistaken, you're also among those who wish to cut down the thorns and pursue the truth. No? And by the looks of it, you're not from Fontaine. Well, you're right on the more about that one, but who are you? <laughs> Have you never heard of the Spina di Rosula? From mediating disputes and providing protection to solving conundrums, you name it. Spina di Rosula does it. And I, Navia, have the yep. honor of being its renowned president. Though those who play by our rules call me boss. I'm Silver, her attendant. Pleased to meet you. No, nasty. you. And I'm Melus. Demoiselle's various daily needs and affairs are under my purview. Huh? Boss? Demoiselle? What gives with the names? <clears throat> well, I am the second generation president. Malus and the others are still used to my previous title. My apologies, demoiselle. Should you prefer, boss, I will endeavor to use that instead. No, no need. You don't have to call me boss. Just Navia is fine. Okay, if you say so. Not that we're members of Spina di Rasula anyway. <laughs> All merely trifling details. Never mind. Now, back to the situation at hand. So you want to investigate as well? That's right. I've always kept an eye on the serial disappearance cases. My interest stems from a matter back from my father's time. Judging from the look of things, I find Linny an unlikely mastermind. Really? We think so too! That's why we're looking for clues now! But how did you come to that conclusion? Intuition, naturally. My unparalleled intuition. Uh, okay. Farina sure was quick to point the finger at Linny without any decisive evidence whatsoever, wasn't she? It certainly was. But that's not uncommon for her. If you remember, the Justice had to interrupt her and ask if she was pressing charges just to keep her from getting carried away. Yeah, I did notice that. Anyway, a trial begins the moment someone levels charges. And, of course, there was no way Farina was going to back down in that situation. Sounds more like you just don't trust the Hydro Archon. Well, what's your opinion? I must admit that she can be interesting at times, but liking her doesn't mean that I'll blindly agree with her. Well, when you put it like that... Alright, I've answered your question. Now, it's time you answer mine. I love her outfit. She's She looks amazing. Well, I say it does. But don't worry, you won't hear any pointless questions from me. In your opinion, do you think it's right to treat a trial like it's an opera? Um, well? Yeah, I mean, I was quite critical of that when, uh, you know, in the, when we first came to Fontaine. Uh, yeah, certainly not always. And why would that be? Uh, so doing so makes it easy for the truth to fall by the wayside. Something serious like a trial should be treated like entertainment. Um, I mean, I think that is true, uh, though, I mean, you think about all the legal dramas that people like to enjoy, and even, like, the real-life uh, crimes and trials that um, get televised and things, it definitely is treated like entertainment uh, in our world, uh, let alone this one. <laughs> See, Silver and Malus, I told you they'd be different. Most astute of you, demoiselle. I too think that the traveler's response was most excellent. No matter how wonderful the script or how fervent the audience's expectations may be, the trials that go on stage here must be based in fact. True. And if that can be done, boss, then... All right, that's quite enough, Malus. Anyway, I like your answer. You pass with blind colors. Now... I need to make some preparations, following which our joint investigation shall commence. You two shall be my assistants. Hey! Who's going to be become assistant? <laughs> yeah, hang on a minute. Oh, uh, well, I can be the assistant. Sure. Or your companion, if you like. I'm really not that fussy. Well, that's good. Huh. That's more like it. I think you're missing the point, Byron. 
A s tím, že vodí jako jítem. Far be it from me to brag, but I believe that Demoiselle's intuition will be instrumental in uncovering the truth. You wish to save a friend from false accusations, and we wish to unravel the disappearances. In this sense, our goals are aligned. Hmm, you have a point. Huh. You're quite the talker, aren't you, Mister? And what about you over there? What do you think? You seem like you've got something on your mind. I have nothing to add. Oh, alrighty then. We'll be making some preparations first. Uh, just be sure to let us know if they start revealing Linny's tricks. <laughs> Thanks. Okay, interesting. I still have no idea what's going on. Right, what's going on over here? Using this. Sorry, but no one can freely enter or exit the Opera House at the moment. If you wish to leave, you must register your identity with us first. Ah, no, we're not leaving. We're representing Linny and Lynette as attorneys, so we're investigating the case. Were you always guarding this entrance? Yes. After the Chief Justice gave the order, everyone coming in or out must undergo a strict inspection. So, the missing girl couldn't have left from here. At least, not from that point on. Well, what about during the show? I doubt there was much opportunity then, either. That doesn't answer the question. How can you be so sure, hmm? Well, because I was in charge of security near the entrance at that time. I couldn't see Linny's performance from here, which was quite a shame. Just my luck. But still, I did not abandon my post. And I stayed put no matter how loud the applause was. If someone had so much as even approached the door, I would have noticed it, let alone if they had tried to leave. We Melazines are good at that sort of thing, you know. So, it's safe to say the girl couldn't have left through here. All right, thank you for your help. This will be useful info. Okay, entrances and exits to the Opera House. No one left the Opera House during the magic show, and after the incident happened, only those who had their identities cleared by the guards could leave. Okay, well that's one. Okay, we've got one. Why did the rope not count then? Right, let's go back in. We've done that one. Yeah, I'm definitely missing something. Because we've got that little card to come up that explained the rope, but for some reason... And then I'm still very confused. There's something here. Can you speak to these people? I see that you're investigating the area. Well, it just so happens that I'm interested too. If you find any new and interesting leads, be sure to share them with me, all right? Why would we do that? We don't have too many thoughts yet. <laughs> then why don't I tell you my hypothesis first? The way I see it, it all started with that loud thud. The thud? Oh, you mean the sound that happened during the countdown? Yes, exactly. It wasn't terribly loud, but I suspect that most people heard it. Is that when Linny said he'd knocked over something? It's just that everyone was awaiting the results of Linny's trick with bated breath. So no one paid it much mind. But now that the incident has happened, the thud has become an important clue. That makes sense. So, what do you make of it? I'm of the opinion that it may have been the sound of Linny's accomplice. Lynette, perhaps. Jumping atop the water tank, or something like that. And when the pyrotechnics went off, she cut the rope, sending the water tank crashing down. But, wasn't the noise we heard too loud for that? Perhaps the balance wasn't right, leading to a particularly rough landing. Then wouldn't the water tank have started to swing a bit in that case? Oh, that's true. Hmm. I suppose I must reconsider. We've got to gather more facts before starting to make up stories like that. Hmm. That does remind Paimon, though. What was with that sound? Okay, strange sound during the magic show. During the switching performance, there was an audible thump that many audience members heard. I can't remember exactly which one it was, to be Okay. So let's go back here. I obviously there's something I've missed over here then. Thought I'd examined everything. Let's try examining 
the rope again, because I'm sure that that was the... Yeah, that's not doing anything. What else have we got? Anything else here? That's just the rope. Okay. I've spoken to him. We've examined that. We've done all this. That's just the rope. Okay, is there anything else we can examine on the stage then? Speak to these people. The investigation team has some new findings. Turns out there's an issue with the random number selector after all. See, I told you. What if the machine picked some big guy's seat? You think the murderer would have still made his move then? Sorry to interrupt, but we're helping Lenny and Lynette with their side of the investigation. What were you saying about the number selector? There's something wrong with it? You're trying to help them? <laughs> That'll be a tall order. Lenny used the machine to pick a random member of the audience during his performance, right? The lucky girl that later disappeared. Well, we thought there might be a serious problem with the machine, so we had it taken away for further inspection. It turns out that the seat number it picked wasn't random at all. The machine picks that same number every time. I'm sure you already know that you have to make a reservation in advance to get a seat, regardless of whether it's a trial or some performance. In other words, Linny knew who would be sitting where from the very beginning. Hmm. That much checks out. Linny reserved our seats for us, too. Let you see why I was saying it'd be tough to make a case for Linny. Well, thanks. Sorry to bother you. Hmm. Even though it's bad for Linny's case, Paimon had better write it down. Well, absolutely. You've got to be objective. Okay, random number selector. This device was used during Linny's magic performance to choose the lucky number of the audience. However, the guards have found that it will generate the exact same number no matter what. Clearly, someone has tampered with it. Okay, that's what we were missing. Okay, no, two or three still. Can't speak to him. Must be somebody else to speak to. Can't speak to them. What about you, Maurice? You've got a name. Let's speak to you. Hello there. What are you investigating? Hmm. Oh, this location has also been cordoned off because the Magic Troop members are currently considered prime suspects. The investigation team is still collecting evidence. The seats were all booked in advance, so we were able to deduce the missing woman's identity by checking the guest list. Could you tell us who she is? We're Lydia the Nets attorneys. Sure. It's not like this is confidential information. We will publish it later anyway when we petition the public to help us find the missing person. Her name is Halsey. She's a painter from Fontaine who's made a bit of a name for herself. Apparently, she wasn't a regular at the Opera House, but she'd been feeling some pressure with her work lately, which made her decide to come see the Magic Show. The Magic Troop members all claim not to know her. We have looked into her social connections. It seems that she has no personal grievances or conflicts of interest with the suspects. Simply put, she wasn't related to the Magic Troop at all, which matches the features of the previous serial disappearances. Hmm. Were the victims of previous cases also chosen at random? That's how it seems to us, in any case. Apart from the fact that they were all young women of around the same age range, there really weren't any other connections between them. Well, I mean, that connection seems to be all that you would need for some people. <sighs> okay, then. Well, thanks for letting us know all this. I don't need to be so formal. If you do happen to see the missing girl, please be sure to contact us. It is of utmost importance that we get to the bottom of these disappearances. Okay, information about the missing lady's identity. Halsey is a missing person. She is a famous painter and came to watch the magic show in order to take a break from her own creative work. She isn't known to have been entangled in quarrels with any of the members of Linny's magic troupe. We okay, that, everything of no mm, here at the yep. performance venue. Hmm. Paimon wonders how Linny's discussion with the guards is going. Let's go see, shall we? Ooh, things are getting interesting, huh? We're about to see how magic is made. Okay, yeah, that's going to be interesting. Uh, we're over there. Yeah, well, there, there they are. Understood. Then I will be going with you. Just so you're aware. I will be monitoring your actions and making notes as necessary. 
Very good. Thanks for being so agreeable. I'd pull a rose out of my hat as a gift for you if I could. You may spare the pleasantries. I'm just doing my job. You've arrived. Uh, who's this? Me? <laughs> I'm Spina de Rosula's guardian angel. If you've got a problem, I've got the firepower. <laughs> Sorry, I got a little carried away there. Call me Navia. I'm a partner of theirs, and will be helping investigate this whole situation. And these are my companions. Would you mind if they join as well? Hmm? Fine by me. Oh, new helpers? I would be most grateful. Well, let's just say we're tagging along. It's not every day you get to see the secrets behind magic performed on such a large scale. <laughs> I appreciate your kind interest. Come with me. We'll be heading below stage. Huh? Below stage? Yes, a world of secrets is hidden beneath this magic box, yeah, prepared specifically for this switcheroo trick. A little tunnel leading to the boxes. But before I reveal everything, you should have a look first. Notice anything strange here? I'm not trying to be dramatic. Remembering the details of a trick will help you understand the methods used to perform it more easily. Huh. Weren't there balloons and other decorations here? Where did all that go? Ah, good eye. That said, you're still far from discovering the answer. The back door isn't the same. Uh, the back? You mean the inside of the door? What's different about it? Paimon didn't notice anything. <laughs> Very good indeed. I thought you might not be able to catch that, given that you were sitting in the first row. The back of this door was patterned. Those patterns are now gone, replaced by a smooth wooden board. So, if you put two and two together, what do you get? Wait, does that mean there's another box inside this one? <laughs> exactly. Alright, let's go. I'll tell you how it works as we head down. So there was a passageway under the magic box! And this passage links the two boxes together. <laughs> I knew you'd figure out most of it as soon as you saw this place. Yeah, I mean, that's that fairly obvious. That's you know, the easiest way of doing that sort of trick. The two magic boxes are positioned right above the two entrances of the tunnel. See this flatbed trolley? The box with the lucky audience member in it would be shuttled over to the other side using the trolley. This trolley can raise and lower and even rotate, ensuring that the box will face in the right direction. I see. So that's the purpose of the box inside another box. Precisely. The inner box would descend after the audience member was put inside and be moved along the trolley, all while the outer box would remain on stage as if nothing had ever changed. Once the box was lowered, the trolley would store some energy through this device here, with which it would complete the rest of the steps. The audience member would only be able to feel some slight movements in the dark, and by the time she walked out, she would already be back on stage. Then what about your side of the trick? Right! You were talking that whole time, and you even came out for a moment near the end! Ah, yes. A phonograph operated by Lynette was used to achieve that effect. My assistant and I had already scripted our conversation beforehand. When the countdown began, I had already gone to the opposite box via a tunnel using that ladder. And what about Lynette? Where was she? I was in the mezzanine space in the back of the box. Oh, interesting! That's how we were able to coordinate Lenny's lines with the assistant. And by the way, I was the one who walked out of the box at the end. I mean, we are twins. All it takes is a change of clothes, and no one can tell who's who. <laughs> really? <laughs> isn't there a height difference? Or is that just the angle we're looking at them? And that's my Maybe favorite part of this trick. Only Lynette and I can perform it. So that's how it all worked! Wow! Every detail you revealed was more amazing than the last! I can tell a lot of thought was put into this. Lynette would briefly walk out of the box and then go back in, 
jumping into the tunnel and escaping before the box on the trolley could finish ascending. And then I walk out of the other box in the audience area, and the trick would be complete. The operative word here being would. But as you saw, Cal was in the box, not our audience member. She, on the other hand, mysteriously vanished. We really don't know how that happened. If not for that interlude, this would have been an astonishing trick. I probably never would have figured out how you pulled it off. And yet, to think that someone was able to use this magic trick to commit a crime. Could we have a look around? I think we can come up with some more leads. This is the scene of the crime, so Lenny and Lynette are not permitted to stay here. I'll escort them back up. Yes, of course. No need to be so strict now. I won't disappear into thin air, you know. Thanks, everyone. We're counting on you. Okay, the magic trick. Then he gave a detailed account of how the trick was supposed to work by using a box inside the box. The idea was for the box to contain the audience member to be transported across via a tunnel underneath, and Denny himself would also use his tunnel to get to the other side. Meanwhile, having changed the outfit, Lynette and her assistant would take charge of, of on stage interactions. The magic box on stage has an additional layer to its rear, which Lynette and Linny's in Denny's clothes remained hidden. She would appear at the end of the magic trick and lead people to believe that Linny had been able to instantly move to the box on the other side. The magic box at the centre of the audience stands has two layers, and beneath it is an entrance to the underground tunnel. This was how a lucky audience member was meant to have been transported without the audience noticing. Uh, okay, let's search for clues. This should be the control device for the trolley. It seems to be able to operate automatically. That's that switch there, I guess. Ladder. Uh, a ladder is required in order to return to the magic box above. Ooh, what was that? Uh, okay, we can go back up if we want to. Let's look around. What is that? Huh. What's this? Grappling hook? Looks like a hook tied to the end of a rope. Huh? There's all kinds of odds and ends here. Linny didn't mention this earlier. Perhaps it was a prop for a different trick. Why would it have been left here? Whatever it is, let's make a note of it first. A rope that has fallen to the ground, a metal hook has been tied to one end of this rope. Its use is unclear. I must say, Pyman's getting very into this. Just search around, make sure I'm not missing anything. Ooh, a vase, broken. The floor is wet. Please be careful not to slip. Speaking of which, why would there be water here? Maybe it was for a trick? Oh, Hyman knows! It's one of those tricks where you pour water into a jug and then flip the jug over only for the water to disappear? And here's a broken vase! Huh. Did the trolley knock it down while moving? Uh, that can't be. Trolley moves along tracks from start to finish. It couldn't have hit the vase at this distance. Hmm. Let's note this down too and think about it later. There are many pieces of broken flower vase on one side of the tunnel. All the water within has been spilled. Judging from the distance, it seems unlikely that it was knocked over by the trolley meant to transport the magic box. Uh, what was that? Investigate clothing. Oh, it was a dress. Oh, these are the clothes that the lady chosen from the audience was wearing, right? Her clothes are here, but she's nowhere to be found. Lily didn't mention the guest having a wardrobe change. Right. And do you really need to do that if you're kidnapping them? Well, you could potentially dress them up as somebody else so they wouldn't be recognized. I've heard about people who, like, when they kidnap people... Oh, this horrible story I heard actually it happened close to me, I think, um, where some people were uh, in a supermarket and they were going to kidnap a child and they grabbed the child, took her into the, um, the bathroom, they gave her a haircut and put her in different clothes. Luckily, they were caught on the way out. So, but that's that's horrific. Uh, just thinking about that one. But yeah, so if you're kidnapping someone, 
you change their clothes, give them a different haircut, then when people are looking for the victim, they're not going to recognise them. Ugh, this is so confusing. Hannah doesn't want to be a detective anymore. <laughs> Look at her eyes. No, you get it. You're writing down the notes. You're excited about it. Okay, young lady's clothes. The clothes belonging to Halsey, the lady who went missing, were found in this tunnel. The reason for this remains unknown. Okay. What was that? Investigate. Uh, you don't know why there was a, a hook here. It might be the prop for a different trick. Oh, that's that thing again. Okay, we've gone back on ourselves. So we've done the bars, the clothes. Uh, oh, what's this? Examine. Oh, a bit awkward to. Where is it? Tricks. Tracks. A high precision is required to complete this magic show, and the tracks are perfect for making the trolley stay on its designated course. Okay, anything else? That's just the tracks again. Uh, storage boxes. All kinds of props and costumes are haphazardly stuffed inside. Okay, some clothes here. Hats. Book. Right, what have we got? A trolley. The trolley is crucial for transporting the magic box to the other side of the, cul the culprit. Must have used this to execute the plan. Okay, what else are we missing? And what was that? Someone came up then. Yep, what was that? You see that just flick up there? Looks like it's trying to get my to do something with the mouse. There we go. Investigate. What is this place? Looks like a vent. It seems someone could fit through here. Huh. Could this have been the suspect's escape route? Hmm, alone, perhaps. But if they had to pull another person with them, this space would be too narrow. But there are no other ways in or out of here. Other than those that go through the magic boxes. And Lily and Lynette were in the two magic boxes. Oh, you're right! Let Paimon write that down! So the tunnel then looks like it could allow one person passage, barely. But leave, leaving along with the missing lady seems an unrealistic prospect. So yeah, it looks, looks pretty big. Seems we're just big. about done investigating down here. Yes, let's head back up. Okay. Let's go. This is fascinating. Well, we've ascertained the state of the crime scene. Let's find a place to sort out our findings once Malus returns. Seems to me that there are several things that don't add up here. Apologies for the wait, demoiselle. So, what did the guards say? Did the criminal escape through the vent? They believe the odds of that are very low, since the vent leads to the Opera House's basement. The guards have checked the area carefully. No one left through the basement during the performance or after the incident, and no one was found hiding there. So the tunnels become like a secret chamber then! You know, like the kind you usually see in novels! Yeah, it would seem so. Hmm. The plot thickens. Halsey's disappearance and Cowell's death are both quite inexplicable. Huh. No wonder Farina was so confident in her accusation. All the current evidence points toward Linny and Lynette. Yeah, I'm not convinced. In other words, the charges are very likely to be upheld unless we make some considerable progress. Charges and then trial. So if the charges are upheld, they'll announce a sentence? That's right. This is how a trial goes in the Opera House. During the proceedings, the Chief Justice and the Oratrice will hear statements from both sides. The Oratrice will too? That's right. This is how indemnidium is produced. The statements from both sides, the defenses from attorneys, witness testimonies, and even the audience's emotions will all be projected on the Oratrice. To put it simply, it's as if the Oratrice has its own will and is a judge in its own right. This also precludes any kind of favoritism on the part of the Chief Justice. And not that this has ever happened anyway. Fascinating. Once both sides have finished speaking, the Chief Justice will make his final decision. 
this too will be used by the Oratrice as a reference. Then, finally, the Oratrice will be consulted by officials. The result it returns is the will of justice itself. Huh? So that machine is the one that actually decides? I'm on that another leg called the shots. In practice, there is very little difference. Both have always come to the same judgment. Which is why people have great faith in the Chief Justice. Ah, yes, the guards also asked me to convey that none of us will be allowed to leave this place before the trial. Huh? Why? Because we've chosen to act as the twins' proxies. That makes us persons related to the case. <sighs> They're concerned that we might be colluding with outside parties. Or that we might find outside help to disrupt the case. And even if that were not so, it could prove problematic if we happen to spread key information about the case ahead of time. I'm ready to break out at any time. <laughs> whoa, whoa! There's no need for that! Paimon thinks they have a point! That said, are they providing food? <laughs> of course. I just hope you don't mind the lack of options. I'm afraid that catering to all tastes is not in the cards, nor is any guarantee of balanced nutrition. Well, that's not the time to be picky. In that case, let's just sort out our findings together here. Pity. I was hoping to take you to try some of Fontaine's famous desserts, too. Oh, that would have been lovely, but okay. I mean, what better way to properly think through our findings than over some tea and sweets? Maybe another time. Huh. Breaking out suddenly doesn't seem like such a bad idea after all. <laughs> Paimon. Just kidding. Just kidding. Paimon will still do her best, even if there are no snacks. Hmm? What do you mean, no snacks? Of course we'll have snacks. If we cannot buy some, then we'll simply make some. Huh? Here? But how? Understood, demoiselle. Everyone, please come with me. <laughs> what are they doing now? I, I like Navia. Wait, Good first impressions. you're carrying a portable stove with you? <laughs> yes, I must be prepared to meet the demoiselle's baking needs whenever the fancy strikes her. Oh my god. <laughs> I have eggs, sugar, and almonds at the ready. Wow. <laughs> Good work, you two. Then I'll get to it. Please sit tight for a moment. Oh, where You'll are you get keeping that? My awesome snacks soon enough. These three are quite the interesting group. <laughs> must be uh, Spina do Rosler thing. Uh, Navi methodically handles the ingredients and pulls fresh macarons out of the oven. <laughs> Even better now. Paimon can't stop drooling. From the way you had these two guys carrying all that stuff around, Paimon thought you'd have them do more during the baking process. But you ended up doing the entire thing by yourself. Beating the egg whites, grinding almonds, everything. I was applauding. <laughs> oh, well done. The very important job. And I was giving encouraging smiles. <laughs> uh, that's not quite what Paimon meant, but okay. Fancy dress dirty beating egg whites and baking like this? <laughs> well, I don't think it's carved in stone anywhere that fancy ladies can only read books, sip tea, ride horses, and play the piano. I just really enjoy making snacks. Fair enough. Don't underestimate beating egg whites, by the way. It's a real arm workout. You also need to beat them to just the right consistency, or your macarons will crack. Anyway, give these a try, fresh out of the oven. There's three for each of us. Only three? Oh, come on. I think that's enough, Byron. Well, eating too many sweet treats might send all that sugar to your head. <laughs> you wouldn't be able to think clearly about the case on a sugar rush, would you? Tea is ready to be served as well. This is Demoiselle's favorite. Strong black tea with a floral fragrance that clears the mind and lifts the spirit. Well, thank you. Why don't you take a break as well? No need for concern. I'm merely doing as I should. All right, then. <clears throat> Down to business. As Paimon mentioned previously, the tunnel seems to be something of a secret chamber. However, we can assume that Linny and Lynette were not alone within it. Some criminal also occupied its sealed confines. The Magician Twins could have committed the crimes, of course, but they lack any logical motive. Exactly! 
Why would they do such a thing right when everyone was watching? So apart from the twins, we're left with two other people, the missing girl and the deceased. The flower vase and the thud we heard during the performance could indicate some altercation between Halsey and the criminal in the tunnel, resulting in the shattering of the vase, the discarding of her clothes, and her abduction. Perhaps the criminal thought that since she was chosen from the crowd, she would be too easy to identify if she was still wearing the same clothes. Paimon thinks that makes sense, but the real trouble is... There's no evidence that this third person even exists. <sighs> True. None of the clues we found thus far support the existence of this third person. But the only people left to consider are both technically victims. Whether it's the missing girl, Halsey, or poor Cowl. Huh. Could Halsey have secretly made modifications to the magic props in order to murder Cowl before making her escape? But she had no way of knowing how the magic trick worked. Uh, that's right. And even if she had tampered with the setup, she would need to understand the entire trick to pull it off. Nor does she have any motive. The guard said that she has never had any dealings with the magic troops' members. <sighs> Were we not thorough enough in our search? From the sound of things, this is turning into an impossible case. Your macarons are amazing though, Navia. They smell great! They're nice and crisp and super sweet! <laughs> They are my specialty, after all. And I see you've already had five of them. Paimon, come on. What? Five? Oh, that can't be right. Paimon only counted three. Honest. Yeah, of course he did. Please don't worry about it. At my age, a few less sweets might actually be a good thing. Oh, man. You ate his macarons. Uh, no, no. Being greedy is one thing, but Paimon... Okay, she's adamant about this. Besides, Paimon knows that if she ate too many, then others wouldn't have enough. Uh, it's fine. If you ate them, you ate them. Uh. Wait, even you don't believe Paimon? Oh, how could you? If Paimon ate those two extra macarons, then may they turn into stone in her stomach! Okay, yeah, she's very adamant she didn't do it. <laughs> Alright, we get it. Well, I suppose one of us might have gotten too engrossed in our chat and eaten them by mistake. No big deal. No, I think this could be important to the case. Malouse, set up the stove again, if you would. Huh? What are you doing? Making sure everyone gets three macarons, of course. Oh, there's really no need to do that. Exactly. We don't want to trouble you. As you wish, demoiselle. And I have the egg, sugar, and almonds. <laughs> Where are you putting all this stuff? Now he does the second round of baking over the two missing macarons. However, the discussion that follows does not yield much progress. Oh, that's it for snack time. I'm going to have another look around the area. I don't know what we're looking for yet, but we've still got some time. As attorneys, I suggest the two of you think the case over again. It would be awkward if you got all tongue-tied on stage during the trial. All right, thanks for your help and for the snacks. <laughs> it was nothing. A small task for the Spina di Rosula. Silver, Malouse, it's time to go. I'll be back if I find anything new. Okay, neither Carol nor Halsey had a motive, but after having talked to Navia, the likelihood of a third person being involved seems very low too. Hmm, this is a, a strange case. Alright, okay. it's time to put our heads together. We've got to get our defense ready for the trial. Oh, it's probably going to be a long and difficult case. <laughs> There's no point in worrying about that now. We just need to prepare. Here, take Pylon's notes. They should help you review the situation. Okay, so we need to review the notes and then wait until the trial on the following day. Okay, well, I think we will leave that until next time. Thank you for watching today. If you've enjoyed that one, I am intrigued. This is going to be good fun. I do love a good mystery. I've said that many times now. So join me back next time and we'll see if we can solve this case. And I'll see you then. Goodbye.